This is a reminder that we have our last live in-person retreat this October 10th to the 15th. It is in magical Sedona, Arizona, nestled in the Red Rock Mountains. We've got eight spots available. We have a full itinerary designed to foster connection and inspire all kinds of new ideas on how you can enhance your lifestyle. We've got stargazing, pickleball, ghost stories, vibrant plant strong meals, world-class lectures, yoga, hiking. It is incredible. Come spend a week with us and discover all that's possible with a plant strong lifestyle. Simply visit plantstrong.com slash Sedona for all the details. And as a bonus, healthcare providers can earn continuing education as part of the registration fee. You know, you've said that this is one of the most important tools that you have in your kitchen. You couldn't live without it. Um, can you just sum up for me as like, as a busy mom and everything else you have going on, how this has been such a game changer for you. You're right, Rick. I could not live without the Instant Pot. Um, I, I work a full-time job. I have two kids, 11 and 14. They play five different sports. Uh, I help coach three different teams. And eating a healthy food is important to me and to my family. And without these, I don't think we could do it because we would just be short on time and reaching for last minute foods. And this help keeps us on track, healthy, and still playing sports and running and riding trails. I'm Rip Esselstyn, and welcome to the Plan Strong podcast. The mission at Plan Strong is to further the advancement of all things within the plant based movement. We advocate for the scientifically proven benefits of plant based living and envision a world that universally understands, promotes, and prescribes plants as a solution to empowering your health, enhancing your performance, restoring the environment, and becoming better guardians to the animals we share this planet with. We welcome you wherever you are on your Plan Strong journey, and I hope that you enjoy the show. One of the topics that we receive so many questions around is the idea of batch cooking. How do I do it? How can I make it easier? What types of food should I be batch cooking? Why does it seem to take so long? And as the kids head back to school and we enter into fall sports season, I want to talk to one of Plant Strong's finest, Pam Croft, about one of the game-changing appliances in batch cooking, the Instant Pot. Now, Pam, known as Trail Mama on Instagram, is a longtime Plant Strong athlete. She's a busy mother of two active kids and also works full-time in between her training and her coaching. She is the definition of time starved, which is why I could think of no better person to have on this particular episode of Snackables to talk with me about batch cooking with her Instapot, actually Instapots, <laughs> because she owns more than one. So how exactly do you use it? What are the benefits of an Instapot versus just cooking on the stove? What are some of her favorite recipes for the family? We discuss this and much more today. So if you've had that Instapot in your cupboard since purchasing it over the holidays, let's break it out and get cooking. And if you're listening to this podcast and you want to see her demos and photos, visit the episode page at plantstrongpodcast.com and we'll have a clickable link to the YouTube video. Hey, Plant Strong gang, welcome to another episode of Snackables, where we chew on all things plant-based. Today, I've got a very special guest for you all. Her name is Pam Croft, and I've known Pam since about 2015 when she attended one of our plant stock events at the Esselstyn Family Farm and Farm in upstate New York. Uh, and she has been... Uh, just a fantastic uh, supporter of all things plant-based, all things in the plant strong world. And uh, she's a very busy, active mother 
And so I thought it'd be great to get her on and we can talk to her about running. We can talk to her about cooking, Instapot, kids. And um, yeah, so this is just perfect for snackables. Pam, hello. Hi, Rip. Thanks for so, having me. Oh, yeah. So tell me, where where do you live? Where, where are we talking to you from? I am in Northern California, up near Sacramento, Folsom area. That way. Yep. And I just came from soccer practice. So. Okay. And so you guys are feeling the heat there? It's it's getting warm. It was 102 on Friday. We're about, you know, 89, 90 this morning at around, you know, 830 or so. So it was it was a cool breeze at soccer. So that was nice. Yeah. And so you um, you have been a very like avid runner for for a while. What started that? Well, I, I did team sports in high school. I did soccer. I did basketball. I did softball all through high school. I got to college and uh, my freshman year, we had four roommates in a small little room. And then it progressed to, I think, about seven by the time I was a senior. And I had unfortunately didn't do sports when I went to college. I did all the intramural stuff, but I started really just missing the active stuff. And with seven college roommates in one little dorm, it was really nice to just go out and go for a run to clear my head, think about my schoolwork. And so that's where it started. And then I moved to California and there's like a race out here every single weekend. And I just started volunteering at those because they seemed really cool. And then I'd get inspired. I volunteered at the marathon, saw them finish and was just blown away. And so started doing marathons and then jumped into ultras and the rest is history. And so when you say ultra, what does that mean to you? Uh, I ran my first 100 back in 2019, so 100 miles up in Southern Oregon, uh, anything over a marathon distance. So 50K, 50 miler, 100K. I just ran 100K last month to get my fifth time qualifying for Western States. I've been trying for the last five years. Oh my gosh. So, so this will be your first time doing the Western States 100. No, no, I didn't no. get in yet. I have fingers crossed. I got oh, oh. a ticket to get into the lottery to get pulled. <laughs> so I should have 16 tickets. If I, if you do the Western States math, ultra runners will know what that is. I'll have 16 tickets in the lottery this year. So fingers crossed. We'll see. Wow. And so you've been doing this for a while. And how long have you been eating kind of plant strong? 28 years. Really? And, and so what started that journey? It started back in high school. I've always been an animal lover. So it sort of started with that. I also really never liked the taste of meat growing up. I was that kid that would hide my turkey under the mashed potatoes or we didn't have a dog, unfortunately. So I'd give it to my brother or whatever. But um, and then when I got to high school, it was, you know, you're in you're under my roof. You kind of have to eat the way that we're feeding you. And I wasn't on the ball enough to go out and research beans and tofu and all those other things that could kind of substitute it. So I continued sort of hiding it. And then um, 1994, my junior year, my mother passed away from a heart attack. She was 47, totally unexpected. And uh, that sort of subconsciously just switched in something in my head. And I just, you know, back then no one knew that what meat and everything and dairy did really to your heart and your body. And so, it, but me subconsciously, I was like, that's it. So 1994, I cut the ties, went all plant-based, maybe not the healthiest at first, but then I eventually found my way. And then, and so your mother passed away from a heart attack at 47. Is your father still alive? He is. He had a heart attack, in, I believe in his seventies and he had three stents put in. So, um, it, and it just increased. Then I had two kids of my own and I was like, there's no way I'm, I'm leaving this world early. I want to see them get married, have their own kids, you know, all the milestones that my mom missed my prom and my wedding and the birth of my children. And, you know, I'm 45, so I'm getting close to that age where she, you know, she passed. So yeah. I, it was more, more important than ever to eat healthy, stay active, be active, keep the family active. That's always been my, my inner drive. Yeah. Well, the good news is that we, we, you know, we now know that genetics does not determine your fate, right? What really determines your fate lifestyle. Is, <laughs> is lifestyle and what's on your dinner plate. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so you've got two kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a also oh, what, a, a husband that's very active as well. He's really into mountain biking. What's his name? Vans? 
<laughs> his his Instagram is Vans. Yeah, he's he's he, he got married in Vans. He wears Vans all the time, so he kind of got stuck. But his name is Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, who likes to wear Vans. <laughs> nice. I I I actually love Vans too. They're so easy just to slide in and out of. Absolutely. Um, so let me ask you this. So on your Instagram, you have a post where you say jobs fill your pockets, but adventures fill your soul. What's the latest adventure that you've, you've been on, Pam? Uh, I drove to San Jose all by myself. I ran a hundred K, which is 62 miles, no crew, um, finished, got third in my age group, uh, went back to my hotel, showered, slept, woke up, drove home, went to soccer tryouts the next morning, straight there. Uh, and then next weekend, I'm at, or next weekend, next month, I'm going to Tahoe for a 55K race up in Tahoe. So I try to plan a little adventure if I can each month. Lovely. Now, when you're out there running, is there a favorite surface you like to run on? Oh, trails. Single track, soft trails. The Western States Trail is perfect. I love Auburn, which is the endurance capital of the world. It's just beautiful. It's some, some shade, a little bit of sun. I'm one of those weird people that like the heat sometimes, yeah. so I don't mind it if it's a little bit hot. But um, nice, soft trails. Perfect. And so is that how did you get the so your Instagram handle is Trail Mama. How did that come to pass? Back in 2009. So I've always been obsessed with Western states. My previous life, I was a, a producer for PBS and they did a documentary on the Western states race. And I thought, holy cow, this is amazing. And so I went out and I volunteered two years in a row, I actually dragged my husband out there one year. And he was like, why would anyone want to do this? And I'm like, I want to do this. So I researched how you had to do it. And you had to, to you had to run a certain distance and qualify and all this stuff. So I signed up at my local running store to do their ultra training program. And they would show you the trails around Auburn and cool, which is fantastic, because I had nowhere to go. So I ran my first 50k. And then I ran right a month after that, I ran a 50 miler all with this group, right before my daughter turned two. My mm -hmm. first daughter turned two. So it was, you met some great people, you learned all the trails, and then I've been sticking with it ever since. Well, being such a fan of the Western States, you, it must have been a real thrill for you to attend Plant Stock in 2016 when we had Scott Jurek there and when everybody went on a run with Scott. He was amazing. He ran with me and he, he told me, he said, because we talked for a little bit on that run, and he's just like, it's really hard to get in. Yeah. Just be patient with the lottery. <laughs> not many people get in with one ticket. <laughs> I'm five years later. I'm still trying. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> just, yes, you are. Well, and for the listeners that don't know, Scott Jurek, he's he's all plant based, uh, and he has won the Western States 100 mile run seven times. Crazy. I saw him finish quite a few times too. I would drive out there and watch him finish. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. All right, so Pam, let's. I want to pick your brain today on the instant pod. I think people call it Insta, but it's spelled instant. Uh, it. I mean, I, some people like they swear by this thing. It has changed their lives. They couldn't live without it. I want you to know that we do not have an Insta pod. Uh, I'm kind of a little bit intimidated and overwhelmed by it. So I'd love for you to kind of assuage my concerns <laughs> about the instant pot. So um, how long have you had one, two, three in your house? How do you use it? What do you use it for? And all this stuff. And let me also say to everybody listening that uh, I have no affiliation with Instapod. I'm not making a penny off them. This is purely just kind of curiosity. And of course, you know, Chef AJ, you know, screams from the mountaintops about the Instapot. So let's dive in. What, what's, where do we start, Pam? Okay. Well, I got my first Instant Pot, which is the six quart seven in one duo in January of 2015. And I think I saw some, it might've been Chef AJ, it might've been somebody else on YouTube. And I thought, what is this thing? Cause I would spend weekends with four pots on a burner, trying to make beans, trying to make rice, trying to make quinoa so I could have batch cooking, you know, batch cooking. And it was horrible because I'm terrible at staying by the stove. So I would wander off and everything would bubble over and then I'd have to clean my, it was just a nightmare. This thing has changed my life. So in 2015, I got my first one. I got it on Amazon and I think I paid $147 for it. I went back and I looked and now they're like 80 at Target, Amazon. And then two years later, 
yeah, 2017, two years later, my husband decided we needed to have another baby. And so he got <laughs> me the three quart version because I was lugging the six quart on our vacations, on my trail runs, like destination races where we would be staying in a hotel. I'd bring it with me. We bring it every time we go to Tahoe, we bring this. So he got me the smaller one in hopes that I'd bring the smaller one. I still bring the big one because it just makes so much. But now oftentimes I use both at the same time almost every single day. So um, wow. I make anything from soups. I make my beans for the week in there. Uh, I make quinoa. I make rice. I make. I, I basically batch cook everything in the Instant Pot. And then it's just grab and go all throughout the week in the fridge. So you say you like to make soups in there. Give me an example of some soup recipes that uh, people might be able to cook in their Instant Pot. Absolutely. So I'm, I, I do create my own from time to time, but I'm terrible about writing down ingredients. I usually throw things in, but I do love looking at a recipe and then trying to morph it into an Instant Pot recipe. So Cole's ca cauliflower soup from your book, my kid's favorite. So I've morphed that into an Instant Pot recipe. Um, the now, hold on. now, you know, you got to let me jump in here, <laughs> especially when you say Cole's creamy cauliflower soup. So for people that don't know, that was the first solid food that my son Cole ate when he was, I don't know, one and three quarters or two. And it's, and, and it's really, it's, it's a creamy cauliflower, so onion, good. cauliflower, uh, I think onion, carrots, celery, uh, celery, nutritional yeast. If it, optional ingredient is, uh, is throwing in some peanut butter, but it is really nice. I, my kids love it. And, and it's funny because they give them a carrot or celery or an onion and they won't eat it, but it's in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It has to be prepared the right way. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then uh, the sweet, holy deliciousness soup. I love that out of the plant strong cookbook or one of your cookbooks. And then, um, Oh, Pierce's red lentil. That's from the cookbook. We love that one as well. So, uh, I make all of those in the instant pot. I just adjust the liquid because that's really all it is. And then that's what we have for dinner every week and then lunch for leftovers. And now do you ever do, um, oatmeal in the oh. instant pot? So this is more for my husband and I, some nights the kids want something else. They're not into the savory oats yet, but I love steel cut oats and making savory oats. So I, I, morph my own recipe. Um, and that's what we have for dinner most of the time. I don't mind it for breakfast, but my husband find it. He's not a savory breakfast person. He's a sweet guy. So we have that for dinner probably once a week, I'd yeah. say. I yeah. just change up the greens. Yeah. that's Well, that's fun. And I, that's one of my mother's favorite recipes on the planet is those savory oats with the greens. She also loves to put in some shiitake mushrooms, the nutritional yeast the turmeric because it's so anti-inflammatory. Um, for some reason, I'm not a huge fan of the savory oats, but for dinner, I could, I could see getting into it, but not for breakfast. For do breakfast, you like I, salsa? I do. I Add do. some salsa to your savory oats. That changes the ball game, makes it so good. Yeah. Well, my mother's a big fan of putting in the sriracha. Okay. Yes. But <laughs> sriracha salsa. Yeah. Um, okay. So in doing my research for the uh, Instapot, what I, some of the things that I really liked about it, obviously I love how inexpensive it is. I think that's really important right now, you know, with inflation and everybody's hurting right now. Um, I mean, the fact that you can get one of these for anywhere from 50 to a hundred dollars is I think phenomenal. Yeah. Um, as you said, it's super convenient. So you can just, if you don't like being in the kitchen, you can just throw all your ingredients in, the, in there and then you set the timer and then come back. Do you ever run the risk of overcooking something? I haven't yet. Um, it's been great. I'm not a fan of, of you, instant pot lingo. There's the natural release and then there's the pressure release where you release the pressure yourself. I tend to just let it all go and I leave the house and I go to soccer practice or basketball practice and I come home and it's, it's, it's done. And you know, it's super hot. My kids learn the hard way that you can't just go digging right in. You have to let it cool because it is quite warm, but I haven't uh, knock on wood had any yeah. Yeah. mishaps by well, letting it cook. Well, several years ago, um, pre COVID when I'm in LA, I like to uh, usually hang out with the Nelsons. I don't know if you know, uh, Jeff Nelson and his twin daughters, Will and his and his wonderful wife, they always have three instant pots going, literally 
Yes. I don't know if you knew this, but three, and in one they have oatmeal, and one they have rice, and in one they have the beans of mm -hmm. the day. And mm -hmm. so any point during the day, you can just grab a spoonful of either beans, rice, oats, or combination, and you know, you're off to the races. And there's a warming feature. So in some of the instant pots, like mine's old school, this one's old, it, when it finishes cooking, it automatically switches to warm. So it stays warm until you shut it off. The newer ones have a feature where you can say warm on or off. So when it finishes, you can make sure that it turns off automatically and doesn't stay warm or you leave the warm on. So if I'm making rice or something and I know we're not going to be home for a few hours, I kind of leave it on. So it just stays warm and then dinner's ready as soon as we walk in the door. Yeah. Yeah. What I also like in doing my research is the fact that it's not made of aluminum or some of these non-stick surfaces, it's all stainless steel, which yeah. is something that makes me feel really good when I'm cooking with something that I know is not gonna be somehow toxic. And it's super easy to clean. I have not had an issue cleaning it once. And I even if I have burned something on the bottom, it comes off super easy. Yeah. And so you say you like to really cook, um, batch cook. Mm -hmm. And yes. so show me if you have it there, how easy is it to put something in the re fridge after you've made, you know, uh, a lot of like rice or beans or a soup or something? Absolutely. Well, so the Instant Pot comes with the normal pot. Um, you can buy lots of accessories. <laughs> I love accessories. Uh -huh. So um, I have these silicone lids, one for each size of the Instant Pot. So basically, if I cooked rice in here, and I wanted to cook something else in there, you can put these silicone lids on the Instant Pot and you can just store it in the fridge this way. So then your kids can pull it out, pull off the silicone lid, scoop some rice into a bowl and heat it up for themselves. Um, that way you can make multiple things at one time. Now, and the other thing I love is yeah. the steamer basket. Um, I like the basket because in the winter, especially I save all my veggie scraps when I'm making anything. I save like the ends of the carrots, the skins of the onions, the skins of the potatoes. I store them in my freezer and I put them all in here and I make my own veggie broth. So you just lift this up out of the instant pot with all the veggies in here and all the broth pouring through. Um, this goes in my compost when, you know, all the scraps and I have fresh made veggie broth that I store. For, and usually I do this in the winter cause it's so darn hot. I make soup or in the summer, it's too darn hot. In the winter, I make so much soup. Yeah, well, that is very trick. Can you can you pull up? Show me the um, the uh, the basket, not the basket, but the the Lineup. pot the pot again with the mm -hmm. lid on it. So here's the pot. This yeah. is the three quart version. Yeah. So if let's say you pull that out of the refrigerator, and if I want to heat something up, do I have the option of putting it back in the Instapot and then turning the Instapot on, or do you just put it? Uh, put it into a microwave, microwave safe dish. And if there was that. soup in here, I would 100% say you could put this back in the Instant Pot, turn on the warm feature and let it sit for a little bit and it would totally warm up. Rice, I don't think would yeah. get soft enough or quinoa or anything like that, but totally, you could totally put this back in the Instant Pot, turn on the warm feature yeah. and you'll have your soup in a couple minutes. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad you said that because uh, again, in doing my research, what I discovered was that you, uh, you need at least a half to one cup of, uh, of liquid in your recipe. Um, otherwise, the unit won't fully pressurize. Right. But the warming feature can turn on. I used to do cooking demos at my, at my work, and I would bring the Instant Pot because I don't have a hot plate. And so I would just use it as a warming feature. It's kind of like a, the warming button is a, is a hot plate, sort of, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I discovered was that... Uh, which I really like because we love using frozen ingredients mm -hmm. um, in just about everything that we we make. And that with the Instapot, there's no need to defrost uh, frozen ingredients. You can just throw it in, and, right? And then just Absolutely. maybe, yeah, just put the temperature up or not the temperature, increase the time by maybe a few minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Depending on what it is. And I will often make a big batch. I, we love chickpeas in my house. I make a mm. huge batch of chickpeas and then I'll freeze some of them. So when I do make a soup, rather than dumping canned beans in there, I just take the frozen chickpeas out of the freezer, dump them in with the soup and warm it, you know, cook everything up. Yeah. And then if you're using dried beans, uh, you, there's no need to soak or pre-cook. You can just throw them in with the other ingredients, which is really nice. Yes. Um, yes. And then the other thing, that I saw is that, you know, besides cooking, you know, rice, beans, grains, oats, chilies, stews, um, you know, some people make yogurt with this thing. Um, 
you can saute vegetables in this thing, as you showed us with that basket or you know, doing your um, doing the broth. You can bake in it. Uh, yes, I've made a cake in mine. <laughs> trick. And then and then also you can pop popcorn using the saute function. Which, I haven't tried that. I need yeah. to try that. Yeah. My kids I mean, love um, fresh pop popcorn, so I'll definitely have to try that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, I mean, is there anything else you want to say about the Instapot? I mean, I think that's that's pretty darn cool. I love it. And if you're new to it, the one thing I would say is start out easy. So for me, and that, and by easy, I mean start with lentils. Like I love red lentils, yellow split peas. You can't go wrong trying to cook these because they cook quickly and they absorb the water. Um, if you start off with something like chickpeas in a soup, you run the risk of not cooking them long enough. And then they're going to be, you have to keep putting it back in and making it longer. But lentils are easy. Um, sweet uh, split peas, green peas, and then grains. I would start off with those if you're new, because it's super easy to add those. Um, my trick is always one cup of the red lentils and then three cups of liquid is sort of your, your range. If you, if the recipe calls for one cup and you add three cups of liquid, that's kind of my easy makeshift. So is it, was, is it safe to say that out of every instrument tool that you have in your kitchen, the Instapot is the most valued in the Croft household? Hands down, 100%. It is probably <laughs> the one used the most, multiple times a day. Well, okay. You've inspired me. I will definitely have to go out and, and get one. Uh, and uh, I think, we. what do we have currently? We just have like some rice cooker. It's called like a uh, Zimbabwe. I, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even want to try and pronounce it. What do you have anything currently brewing in those two pots in front of you? I sure do. Big surprise. I have Cole's cauliflower, creamy cauliflower soup in here. I made it before I went to practice today mm. um, because my kid was so excited. She wanted to have it for lunch. Uh, so this is the easiest thing to make. The ingredients are cauliflower, uh, Yukon gold potatoes, carrots, uh, celery, and onion. And you put all of that in the Instant Pot with four cups of broth. And you set it for eight minutes. You let the, uh, the uh, steamer button come up. Don't touch that button. Let it sit. I let the pressure release naturally. And then um, when it's done, another tool to have with your Instant Pot, I find, and it's an extra, is the immersion blender. Mm. I couldn't live without this either because it's so hot, you don't wanna have to transfer to a blender of any kind. So I just use this, I puree everything up, so my kids have no idea what's in it. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think we also add um, either some cashew butter or some peanut butter and then um, tamari. We have two tablespoons of tamari in there as well to kinda spice things up just a little bit. And then I usually, for my kids, uh, I take a bowl, just like this, and I will, Put that in the bowl for my, you know, 11-year-old mm -hmm. and 14-year-old, and that's what they'll have for dinner. And then for the adults, now it depends. Um, usually I serve them, then throw the kale in. Uh -huh. But if I do that today, my 11-year-old's going to be furious. <laughs> so I have a bowl with just shredded kale in here, and then you're going to take it, and you're going to put your soup right over there, and it wilts the kale. Mm as because the soup's so hot you wilt that up and then the kick it up a notch adult part of me that loves this is um red pepper flakes you add that on top yeah and some smoked paprika and that's it it's so filling and so good generally we don't have much for leftovers between the four of us but sometimes we do but my kids and i love this and uh, is is Vans as as nutty about eating uh, this way as you are? He is. You know what? The first seven years of our marriage, he tried to stay his own course, <laughs> and he did okay. And I told him, I said, "Look, I've been plant based for so long. You don't want me cooking meat for you. I might give you salmonella. I have no idea how to cook meat." So he kind of did his own thing on the barbecue. Whenever I'd make dinner, he'd make his own thing. And then I think he just started going, "Gosh." She ran a 50 miler and a 50K and she's back out. Like 
she's doing something, you know, and I went for a 50 mile bike ride and I'm sore. So he started figuring it out and then he watched Forks Over Knives and that was the end of that. And he has been, it's been over 10 years. He's been plant-based himself. Yeah. And yeah, well, you know how it is with the guys riding bikes. They, they give him a hard time. Yeah. And, and so he's, they call him, you know, he's, he's plant-based Charlie or plant Charlie or whatever it is. And, um, but what was great was 2016 at plant stock, we had rich roll. Yes. And he was so gracious. He it was also, also Vans's birthday that day. So he did a birthday video for Vans that said, don't let the guys rally you up, stay plant strong. You know, it was awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure he's also seen the game changers. Yes. Oh, hundred percent. We went to the, we saw that when it came out and then we've watched it multiple times since then. He's, he's a believer. He knows how he feels when he doesn't eat plant strong and he hasn't, I don't think he's, he, I think he accidentally veered off once like six or seven years ago. He didn't know something had something in it. And he said he felt awful, yeah. awful. So he's, yeah. he's on board. And so after doing one of your ultras, uh, typically how long does it take you to recover? Is it, I mean, I, I would imagine it's a couple of days. It, it is. So my hundred K was last May or last May, last month in May. Um, and I was pretty beat up after that one, but I also ran harder, ran faster. It was a super hot day. Like it was the hottest day of the year so far. So it really got hot. Um, and it was kind of the first hot day. So it was kind of a shock to the system, but I was out walking within a few days. Like, I mean, I walk anyway, but like power walking. And then, um, I think I was running, about a week later, my coach wanted me to be really smart about coming back. I had torn my calf uh, a year and a half ago. So she wanted mm. to make sure that I was pretty solid coming back and not rushing anything too much. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's remarkable. Um, you know, just by eating this way, how, because it's such a um, anti-inflammatory uh, just way of eating, yeah, you, after pummeling yourself for 50, 75, 100 miles, you know, it allows you to recover. I, w I actually don't know how much quicker than if, you know, you were com comparing it to, you know, a typical omnivore, but I would imagine it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, of twice as fast. I agree. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. All right. What, do you have something in the other pot as well? I don't. I was going to make my beans and then I, I, I'm going to do that when we get done. <laughs> Got it. And will you show, will you show me like, so how do you take the top off of that thing? So oh. I'll do this one so you guys can see on the. So it twists and then this is your steamer button. So you, when you want to vent the steam. So this thing right here is the super hottest thing in the world. So you never, ever want to touch that. <laughs> so when it does cook, it'll come to pressure and the button will pop up. And then uh, that's when you know it's doing its thing. And then when it's done cooking, the button will go down or you can release via this knob, but you don't wanna have anything over this because that's hot steam coming out of there. And they do sell um, little things you can put on your steamer knob that will direct the steam out and away from cabinets or hands or whatever you have, um, but it's perfect. And then you just turn it yeah. and you lift. Right. And. Then, and right. One yeah. more trick of the trade. You see these things that you get at the dollar store? Mm -hmm. This cleans the sides of your Instant Pot perfectly. It's a little paint sponge. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to get into these nooks and crannies. Yeah, nice. And uh, for that steam, what, you can get like a Game of Thrones dragon that you put on top of there? and it It's awesome. Yeah, and it goes, comes okay. flying out. It's so cool. I have to get one. I got one for a gift. And, and so when that steamer thing goes back down, does that mean the dish is done? Yes. It means it means that the, the lid can be unlocked. You cannot get this thing off if that button is up. So you don't have to worry about your kids strolling in and trying to open it or anything. It will not open until that button is down. Wow. Even if I unplugged it? Even if you it's unplugged good. it. Wow. You have to wait for that button to, to get down. That means all the pressure building inside has been released. Hmm. All right. I have a few questions for you. Okay. The first is you say that you prefer hammocks to hot tubs. Why, <laughs> why, why, why is that? What is it that you don't like about hot tubs? I, uh, 
Because you say you like the heat. I do like the heat. I just, to me, it feels like you're sitting in everyone, sitting in a bathtub with a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's kind of, I mean, I know it's good for your muscles. And I guess if it was my own hot tub, I'd be fine with it. But it's very rare you'll get me in a hot tub. My kids love it. My husband love it. I'll just sit in the hammock and read my book. <laughs> well, you just got to pretend you're sitting in an Instapot with a bunch <laughs> yeah. of your friends. Uh, exactly. Okay. You also say that when you're on your when you're on your trail runs and you come across a tree swing, you got to swing in it. Have you ever gotten in trouble for swinging on a swing that you had no business swinging on? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nice. <laughs> Record still stands, but you have to. You come across even if a playground, you got to matter your age, you got to get on that swing. Uh-huh. Now, when you're running, do you wear um earbuds? No. You listen, no. No. I'm, I'm a big proponent of listening to nature and where I live, there's mountain lions, there's bears, we have rattlesnakes galore. So you really need to pay attention to your surroundings. Um, but I just love the sounds of nature, the birds. Um, I don't love birds, but you can hear the turkeys really early in the morning gobbling everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love I'm, it. I am the same way. I've been, you know, I've been training, whether it's swimming, biking and running or hiking for, I don't gosh, close to uh, 50 years now, obviously in the pool, you know, <laughs> <laughs> although with technology these days, you can wear some, you know, headphones in the water, but I don't like that. Um, but whether it's running, biking, I, I've tried it like for 30 minutes and I just feel very detached from myself, my surroundings. It doesn't your breath, your breathing, everything. Yeah. 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 So to me, it's, 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 it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mess uh, trying to listen to music and and and, uh, and work out. I ran a hundred miles and I didn't listen to music once the whole time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very very uh, very nice. All right, so I saw on your Trail Mama Instagram you made a breakfast that um, that I want to ask you about. It was your gluten free oats, mm -hmm. and then it was some rice cauliflower, yeah. flaxseed chocolate dark chocolate chips and then you and then i think some peanut butter powder and then the peanut butter you know yeah peanut butter flour yeah yeah and so tell me a little bit about that and why the um and why the cali the, the rice cauliflower is that because you're trying to get your leafy greens absolutely wow. you got to get them in every meal and i don't mind kale at breakfast but i just I don't have the time, especially with kids and work and coaching to make two separate things. So I just throw it all together and have my cauliflower with my, with my yeah. oats. Well, that's brilliant. And, and you used a frozen rice cauliflower Yep. Um, that you just threw in there on top of the oats. I'm going to start doing that too, because it's kind of cauliflower is kind of very neutral. Yeah. Right. And I love the fact that you get the benefit of eating a green leafy with, with all the nitrates and, as everybody out there knows, we want to protect our endothelial, endothelial fortress, as my father <laughs> likes to say. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's the it, and it's delicious. Yeah. What What have you had to eat today? Anything today? I've been running around like crazy. Uh, I did have uh, a bowl of oatmeal. I didn't do the rice cauliflower. It was kind of one of those quick get out the door. Uh, the other thing, like, uh, my kids love the um, Labor Day banana bread made into muffins. Yeah. So I make double batches and I keep them in the freezer and my 11 year old comes out every morning and she'll micro, you know, defrost it in the microwave and head off to soccer practice. And so sometimes I have one of those too. Yeah, that badass banana bread, that is a, uh, that's a winner in our house too. This has been really wonderful. It's been a long time. I really appreciate um, you joining me today. And you know, for another episode of Snackables and kind of getting us all up to speed on the uh, Instapot. Yeah, it's not something anyone should be afraid of. It's really easy to use. Um, there's a million different videos out there. Um, I've had friends FaceTime me, text me, I got an Instant Pot. What do I do? <laughs> Give me the play by play. Give me the step by step. And I usually start them off with Cole's cauliflower soup because that's one of the easiest things to make and the most delicious. So yeah. Yeah. start small, work yourself up. What does the Instant Pot mean to you? I could not live without my Instant Pot. Uh, I work a full-time job. I have two very busy kids that play five sports each. I help coach three different teams. 
Uh, I, I love to run. My husband loves to mountain bike and eating healthy is super important to us. And I couldn't do it without these devices right here because it just makes meal prep so much easier and helps keep us on track so that we're still riding and running those trails and playing soccer and all that stuff. Woohoo. Uh, all right. Trail mama, Pam, crop. <laughs> How do I, how do you pronounce your last name exactly? Croft? The P is silent, Croft. so it's Croft. Croft. Oh, the P. Croft. Yep. Yep. Croft. All right. P is silent. Pam Croft. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Hey, give me a uh, give me a little plant strong bump. Boom. <laughs> it's good to see you. Thanks, Pam, for taking the time to show us just how easy and delicious it can be to use the Instapot. And as she said, start with easy ingredients like oats, rice, quinoa, soups, and then you build from there. Just having a base of grains for the week can go a huge way in building nutritious meals for the entire family that is on the go. We'll be sure to put a link to some of the recipes, including Cole's cauliflower soup, in the show notes at plantstrongpodcast.com. Thanks for listening and always keep it plant strong. The Plant Strong Podcast team includes Carrie Barrett, Lori Kordowich, Amy Mackey, Patrick Gavin, and Wade Clark. This season is dedicated to all of those courageous truth seekers who weren't afraid to look through the lens with clear vision and hold firm to a higher truth. Most notably, my parents, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. and Anne Cryle Esselstyn. Thanks for listening.